This is John McConnell, and uh, he has a very exciting show uh, called uh, A Celtic Journey. And John, I, I have a few questions that I really want to ask about your painting. Sure. Um, people have responded so positive to, to your work, and one artist that was looking at it said that she has no idea how you get the depth of color in your paintings. Can you tell us a little bit about this painting that we're standing in front of, sure. and, and how you achieve these rich, rich colors? Okay, well, first, first of all, uh, this painting is a uh, a part of a series uh, known as My Journey of an Ancient Soul. So it's, it's a painting of a soul traveling from this life to the next and the vessel in which that soul is traveling. Um, there are a lot of paintings in this series and all of them have a common, uh, what's common in, in all of them is a vessel form, but the vessel forms are all different. Uh, so when I start a painting like this, I, I actually have no idea what the painting will be like when I start it. I don't know what it'll be like when it's finished. And I start literally by throwing uh, acrylic paint at the canvas, which is on the floor, in a very random way. Um, then I might, I, I might look at it for a while and start to see shapes uh, that tell me something. And so I just, I might work on it a little bit more with acrylic. As you can see in this particular painting, um, I've used a palette knife to put on some strokes uh, after the, the more random throwing of the acrylic. Once that acrylic is dry, um, I work with uh, oil paint. And um, the depth of color that you mentioned is, is actually many, many glazes of, of oil paint. Um, and so when you look at here, for example, in this red, um, that's a nice red, red shape and it glows. The only reason it's glowing is there's probably about six layers of transparent color on that piece of red. Um, same thing with the yellow. Um, there may be not as many different layers on the yellow. Um, there's probably about four transparent layers for the for the yellow to give it that there transparency. There really seems to be a light emanating from the painting. You know, and, and I, I don't know if you spoke with Mary that was here earlier, and she's done a number of large scale paintings, and she said the, the richness of your color is what really drew her to your art. And, and that you, there's, there's this wonderful um, um, ethereal quality to them as well. They're very exciting to paint because for me, I don't know where I'm going. And the painting is what tells me where I'm going. Um, once the initial throwing of paint at the canvas, which is a lot of fun, I might add, you know, uh, but it's also terrifying because you might make a mess of it, you know, but um, usually you don't. Um, but um, I, I start to see suggestions in the shapes that have happened through just throwing the paint, throwing, throwing the acrylic, and I will follow those. Sometimes I'll follow them right to the end and sometimes they won't work and I'll, I'll paint over them and something else will happen. But um, then gradually the painting really begins to reveal itself and, and then it's really just a question of giving it the depth of color, fine tuning the color, making some areas recede back, strengthening up say the, the blue, this, this deep blue, one of my favorite colors, um, alizarin crimson, this is alizarin crimson that I, it's one of my favorite colors, alizarin crimson. And, um, so it, it, it just uh, it, it just happens, and it, it's exciting. Do you have any um, premonition or forethought about the image? Like, do you have um, you know what kind of um, awareness or uh, consciousness do you have when you start a painting? Do you have well, any? you know uh, before we're born, we're we're in a vessel. And um, when I'm doing these paintings, my mind is, what is next? You know, what happens when we move from this life? What is the next part of the journey? And I can't believe that there isn't some kind of a journey. And it seems to me that if we arrive in a vessel, we're going to go out in a vessel. And so that's why each one has a vessel form. 
Um, and that, that idea of the Vessel Forum actually happened through a coincidence in Ireland um, to do with a photograph hung in, in Oakville, Ontario, and an event that happened in County Cork, Ireland, a, a coincidence beyond coincidence. And it involved a photograph of a boat, um, an old ruin of a boat with a, a rib cage and, uh, and just the, the, the keel and the rib cage. And, and, and that huge coincidence uh, it, it involved the beginning of this entire series. That, that photograph was hung on a wall in Oakville, Ontario on the very day that my wife Geraldine and I sat in the garden of an old Irish cottage and we both of us burst into tears because we knew it would play a part in our lives. And a photograph of that cottage was hung on a wall in Oakville, Ontario on that very day and, and the people who hung it had no idea that we were going to buy that cottage or that we were even there. Well, I, I always uh, find that those types of coincidence or, you know, uh, occurrences in our lives um, are pathways. They're, they're, there's some sense of, of guidance that has led us to this moment and if we're perceptive and open, then we follow that and then that leads us into, into our own destiny, you're, our own future. You're right on there. And um, I've been influenced uh, very greatly by uh, the poet, the Irish poet Seamus Heaney. Um, and I have six letters from Seamus Heaney about his influence on my painting. And he puts the creative process into nine words, being a poet. And those nine words um, have been golden to me. And what Seamus Heaney says about the creative process, and this isn't just about doing a painting. This is the creative process of writing a novel, writing a piece of poetry, creating a sculpture, but also of living your life creatively. And it's about what you just said. And those nine words are impulse discovers direction, potential discovers structure, but chance becomes design. And you have to have that little bit of courage to take that chance and go down the road that is less traveled. And, I, and my wife and I have done that and it's given us very, very rich and wonderful lives. Well, thank you so much. That's very, very illuminating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your interest.
We're at Eclectic Gallery, and I'm with Geraldine Slater, who is a, an amazing sculptor. And I wanted to ask Geraldine a few questions about her uh, forms that she's created from paper, if you can believe it. So behind us, um, Geraldine, there's a, a remarkable figure of a boat. Can you tell us um, the, uh, the title of it and where that series came from? Um, it's part of the series that I call the Cura series. And and uh, I started making the Cura series when I was living in the southwest of Ireland. Um, these forms were inspired by the structure of traditional Irish boats that were made with a, a foundation of a wooden frame uh, with stretched hides over it and then tarred for waterproofing. They, they, more recently, they used canvas. But this was a way that I liked working anyway with a, a wooden bamboo frame sometimes and then stretching my handmade papers over it. So that's where the series began. And although it, um, it appears to be such a, um, an obvious compliment to John's series, The Ancient Soul Paintings, they actually came from quite a different direction. They came with the inspiration of the structure rather than the concept that is behind John's work. But nonetheless, they do complement each other pretty strongly. And, and what about these other two vessels beside it? Um, can you tell us you know, the inspiration between these two um, appear to be bamboo? Yes. They are. In fact, that piece is called Kamakura, which is Japanese for bamboo grove. And this piece and the three pieces behind you um, are called Karasensui. In Japan, they give names to various types of gardens. Uh, one, there's either a strolling garden or a contemplation garden. And Karasensui refers to just that, a meditation or, or a contemplation garden. And we are most familiar with them as the raked gravel gardens, I think you see pictures of quite frequently. So that element on these pieces is inspired by the raked gravel gardens and uh, those pieces all resulted from a trip that I made to Japan in 2007. Yes. And the, um, the the other vessel on the other side of you, if you can um, come over to that side, can you yeah. tell us the shape of the vessel? To me, it, it has a really, it's like a crucible. It has a form mm -hmm. that is um, uh, ancient and yet modern. Well, these pieces actually start being built on a balloon, if you can believe oh. it. But how humble. But uh, I just let the pieces get um, dry enough that they will release from the balloon. But soft enough that I can still manipulate the form. It's obviously not a balloon-shaped form anymore. Um, I also really enjoy gilding the interiors a lot of these vessels because I like that contrast between the what the Japanese would call the wabi-sabi exterior, meaning it has a sort of patinated exterior that shows the passage of time, the wear of the elements, that sort of thing. And I like that contrasted against the gilding, either silver or gold on the interiors. There, there seems to be a sense of ancient and modern combined. Yes, so, yes. so they're to me that the vessel and also the the crucible uh, feel like they're they're uh, you know hundreds and hundreds of years old. The, as you're, you're drawing on a very deep past mm -hmm. and yet making it a very contemporary statement at the same time. I feel like that's what I'm attracted to in a lot of my work and in, in the photography that I do as well. I've always been drawn to subjects that are exhibiting this passage of time, the effect of either or human, our humanity on on what exists in the world, be it the natural world or the the man-made world, or else the, what nature has done to to the world. Well, thank you so much. That's wonderful, and and I really encourage everyone uh, to come and uh, visit Eclectic Gallery. Uh, the show with um, John McConnell and uh, Geraldine Slater will be on uh, through February until February 25th.